Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 4, Work and Energy. The section is 4G, Circular Motion, Force, and Energy. Here's the scenario. The toy car is released from rest on a moose track with a loop-de-loop. -loop. The car is released from a high H such that you never lose contact with the track. The system includes the car and earth. Rotational effects from the wheel friction and air resistance can be ignored. Okay, you're going to be looking at this this scenario but for, before that I want to talk about the roller coaster which this is actually based on okay here's a roller coaster and I want you to understand that based on the conservation of energy every single point here the energy is basically going to be the same so I'm gonna give this an arbitrary value of 10 joules of energy okay here 10 joules of energy is all equal to mgh based on the height okay there is no kinetic energy here Okay, this is, let's say, this is the most bottom part. So this is going to be 10 joules of energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. Here, this is 10 joules of energy, which is equal to mgh plus 1 half mv squared because there's both potential and kinetic energy. Please understand that this height, y, which is essentially height, that has 10 joules of energy, if the roller coaster was a slightly bigger like this, okay, where this, let's say, had a height of 12, there is no way it's going to make it. No, no way it's going to make it. Okay? This energy has to be, to make it to um, the height of 12, it needs more potential energy. It needs more than 10 joules, okay? Keep that in mind, All right? At most, at most, it if it's the same height, it's barely gonna reach it, okay? But it's not gonna go any further, okay? Here, this is the same thing. This has a height h. This is a radius, but this is also a radius, correct? Okay, but if you draw this from the center up is the radius. Now you go center down, which is also the radius. This is really just the diameter. People don't see that, but this is just really the diameter. So in short, if you really think about this, this is MGH here, which is equal to the energy of the system here. It has both MGH plus one half MV squared because it has both a height component and also a velocity component to its energy. All right. Okay. So the first part asks you to draw the forces in this situation. I'm going to make it green because I wrote this in red already. So there is a force gravity pulling it down and force normal is perpendicular to the surface here when the object is in um, a, a circle, it has centripetal force pulling it towards the center. So there is force of gravity on the object, pulling it down, Fg. Then also there is going to be force normal as well. Okay, so force normal and force of gravity is pulling it down. This is what makes the centripetal acceleration at this point. You're going to fill in the energy chart to represent this. We know at the at the start it's all potential it's all kinetic energy. So I'm gonna make that triangle now. Okay. The reason why I made this triangle here is because I'm gonna drop it here in all potential. Okay. It's all gonna be potential. But here in the end, but I'm gonna make two of it. Okay, watch me make two of it because this is going to be the initial and this is going to be the final. Okay. Select. Okay. All right. So the first, the first part had, the first part was all pot potential energy. We know that. The second part had both potential, MGH, and kinetic energy. So here's it. But now you're going to break this up in both potential and kinetic. So I'm going to break this slightly here. 
It has kinetic. Uh, let me use. It has kinetic. And the rest, it's going to be potential. Remember, the area, these two, these, the total area here has to match this area here. Okay? Because, like, exactly like what I said, if this is 10 joules, this has to be 10 joules. So if this is 10 joules of energy, this also has to be 10 joules of energy. All right? There you go. That's how you do that. Next, you're going to cite the bar explaining why the release height must be greater than the, di the diameter of the loop. Okay? Well, that makes sense because, look, MGH has to be higher. If H is bigger than that, so watch this. Okay? What they're saying here is, do you see this MGH? They're going to take this out. And they're going to replace it. They said, well, if this height becomes, let's say, I'm just going to say it's just H right now, okay? This would be impossible, right? Because if this had 10 joules of energy equaling to MG, MGH, this means this has to be 10 joules of energy. Plus, it has to have more joules of energy. That doesn't make sense, all right? If this was 10 joules of energy, this has to be 10, like, let's say 8 joules, and this has to be 2 joules of energy, all right? This height, these heights here, have to be different values, all right? So watch this, MGH equals to 10 joules of energy, and here it's MGH equals to 8 joules of energy, all right? MG are all the same, MG is the same. So the height here has to be 10 meters. I'm just making up some units. Here, the height here has to be 8 meters. Do you see? There's no way for in the loop for the height the height to be greater than. It actually has to be less than. And remember, the height here is defined by the diameter. All right? So that's just a rough explanation. Now I'm just going to give you the academic answer, okay? All right? The object both has kinetic and potential energy at the top of the loop. I wrote it there. The object is moving, therefore it has kinetic energy as well as being at a height. Notice that height is equal to the diameter in the loop. And the earth is part of the system, so it also has potential energy as well. If the height was great if the height wasn't greater than the than the diameter of the loop, the cart wouldn't make it around the hoop due to it not having enough kinetic energy being converted from the potential energy. Alright. Next you want to look at this and you want to explain why what is wrong with Carlos's equation based on this graph. Uh, but first, they ask you to draw a line of best fit. Okay, a line of best fit should look like a straight line. Does this work? Nope. When you draw a line of best fit, you have to make sure that there are equal amount of points above and below the line. So it should look something like this. All right. Now you can explain that equation and do part E as well. I said that the data is inconsistent with Carlos's equation. You have to say yes or no first. And here is the explanation. In the equation, the normal force has an inverse relationship with the height. Force normal is has an inverse relationship of height. You see how H is in the denominator. That means that as height increases, so H here goes up, the normal force should decrease. But that's not the case in the graph. If you look at the slope, it says as height increases, the normal force increase. That's what the graph says, right? As the F normal increase, then height increase. That isn't the case. In the equation, like what I said, as height is in the denominator, as height increase, the normal force has to go down because the of the inverse relationship so that's the reason why it's wrong the case the slope sh the slope of the graph shouldn't be positive it should be negative based on this equation all right uh, now you want to make this suggestion what is also wrong here I said that equation doesn't make sense in terms of the unit because the normal force of the 
unit for Fn should be in Newtons. The right hand side of the equation has Newtons because that's mass times gravity. That's Newtons divided by a meter. With, okay. If you divide that, you get a kilogram over second squared. Okay. Because that meter gets rid of when you divide by the meter of the height. Notice the left hand side had Newtons, the right hand side became kilograms second squared. The left the right hand side doesn't match with the left hand side. Just using dimension analysis, the looking at the units, you could tell why this equation is wrong. Okay? You have to get rid of the height somehow for it to be Newton, or you have to introduce something else here. Alright. If you would like to see that in detail, here I could show it to you. Fn is equal to 2mg over h. Watch how I'm just going to take out things. Fn, which is the normal force, is in newtons. Okay? Newton is really what? Newton is really kilogram times meter over second squared. Right? Mass, acceleration. Okay? Mass g so and mass here so this is going to be kilogram for the mass times mgh squared okay but notice that there's also a height down here this is the height is going to be meter this meter and this meter cancels out you see how that's what i mean by you have a kilogram over second squared here on the right hand side you have kilogram meter over second squared right that height on the bottom screws it up and lastly what would happen if carlos release it from a height of 0 0.8 meters does the car complete the loop or does not complete the loop based on the graph right so take a look at the scenario here okay at this point it needs to have both force normal and force of gravity okay I said that the car will not make the loop and that is because looking at the line of best fit a height of 0 0.8 will produce a negative normal force check it out do you see here this is when um, m is equal to 0 0.8 which is right here do you see how the normal force here is equal to a negative value it wouldn't make sense because what happens if it has a negative value okay Force normal is pointing down. If it has a negative value, it's going to be pointing up. Okay, this is when you have Fn is equal to a negative value. All right, it's, it's going to go up. If you have Fn equals to zero, it's going to be here. It's going to stay in the middle. But if you have Fn is equal to a positive, then it's going to go, it's, then it's going to be pointing down. All right, so I said it here that at at one the normal force is going to be zero which means it will go there and get stuck in the middle of the loop that makes sense okay and the zero is right here if it's one m is equal to one you see that the height the normal force there is going to be equal to zero that means it gets stuck right here in the just there in the loop okay until acted on by an a external force but if the height is greater than one meter, okay, anything above to the right hand side of that one, do you see how it's positive value of the normal force? That means that it will have enough, um, it will have enough to go over the loop, basically. All right. So there you go. Uh, those are all your solutions for 4G.